Samson, thank you so much for doing this. You are a legend in the boxing game. You've promoted a lot of people. Uh, uh, but I, I, before I ask you questions about your current fighters, I want to get into uh, who who you are and and uh, how you came into the sport of boxing, and, and as well as your life story. So, I, I did my research, and from what I understand, you were born in Uruguay, but your f mother is from Hungary and your father is Polish. How did they meet in Uruguay of all places? Well, in in nineteen forties, when it was a war, uh, my father as a young as a young kid, he actually was a early in the 40s. He went from uh, Warsaw mm -hmm. to Uruguay and as a child. Okay. But then he grew up and he met my mother from Hungary and uh, he got married and uh, there how, you are. How did your mother end up in uh in the same way? Same way. So escaping from the war. Escaping from the yeah. uh from the Holocaust. The Holocaust. All right, that's Correct. interesting. Yeah. So how how was being Jewish growing up in Uruguay? Was there any anti Semitism or uh, actually my country is uh, one of the countries that it never exists uh, really anti Semitism or discrimination. Okay. And I remember when I used to be a youth in Uruguay, I have a kid that I went from second grade to third to fourth, and he's a black kid. He was, in yeah, Uruguay, in, in black Uruguay, kid? Yeah, wow. black kid. And, but I never know he was black <laughs> because I never, in my country, never was a discrimination. So you never know, you know, why he's black or what is white. doesn't exist. So when I come to this country, then I realize the that the situation of the discrimination that is unacceptable for me and for all my country. Okay. So we are totally different, I believe, of the rest of the world. We no doubt that it's no absolute discrimination and we're born in a country that the freedom is for everyone. That's that doesn't exist in many other countries. That's interesting. And it's still like that to this day? Uh, Uruguay? Up to the, yes. Now we, ha we receive many Dominicans oh. and many Cubans. That's interesting. And uh, if you see a black men walking with a white woman, it's normal. Okay. Yeah, over here, it's still yeah, looking a sure. different way. It's still, it's, still, you know? it's still a hot topic when you see uh, interracial marriages that, and correct. stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, how did you get into the sport of boxing? Because Uruguay is not really known for... You know, well, till box. now, till now, <laughs> now I'm working very hard. Yeah. So now, in a couple of years, we'll get a champion. That, Vidal, Vidal's going to be a champion. That, that's <laughs> correct, Mundo. Now, what happened is that uh, uh, I was an amateur. I have uh, three fights, mm -hmm. uh, two wins, and one almost I got. No, I almost. Dead. I believe I, I was dead for a few minutes. <laughs> so I got knocked out out of the ring. Oh so I say there's no there's no my no more mm -hmm. boxing. But always I keep the love for for the sport. Okay. And I used to work well when I come to America. I meet my wife. Uh, yeah. I work with many many different uh, uh, work. But I'm very proud that the first one it was in the IBM. Yeah, from what I understand, you 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 uh, you worked in the IBM out. Uh, Washing floors, right? That's yeah, correct, though. Yeah, yeah. Correct, Amundo, again. <laughs> you, you know all my story. Yeah, But man. I'm so proud because that demonstrates that uh, regardless what you do in a way that, uh, that definitely is honorable, and it's an honorable job to yeah. wash floor, and I was the best one. Yeah. So every time I work in something, I try to be the best. If I'm not the best, I walk away. Okay. So what happened that uh, then I used to work in an electronic store and it came to computers. And a kid, 20 years old, coming out of uh, college, you know, it, it tell me what to do. I feel like I'm not anymore from that kind of work and the technology, so I walk away. And by that time, I meet uh, Don Jose Suleiman, mm -hmm. the WBC, President. He pressed him, man, rest in peace. And he told me, you know, you're great for boxing. Your attitude, you know, I used to work in Fifth Avenue on 56th Street, where is the Trump Tower across the street. In that time, it didn't exist, the Trump Tower. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, well, what happened is that uh, he, he pushed me, and I said, to start boxing and be the best, 
you need to start from the bottom and then step by step go up till you get you know the goal to be a promoter so I started selling uh, gloves, manufactured gloves, and then I was a manager. My first uh, uh, boxer, he was uh, Brian, Brian Barbosa. Barbosa. Yeah. What, what did you see in him to, to, to make him your first fighter? He was, I believe, he can be a champion 10 times. Really? But, you know, sometimes uh, this kid, he makes mistakes. And he makes so many mistakes. Actually, after many years, I, I say, I, you know, I work with them. I give them the freedom. When the act of Muhammad Ali comes, <coughs> you cannot be a matchmaker and a, a, and and a manager. manager. Mm -hmm. I let him walk out, and he told me one time, you know, all your success is thank you to me because you learn all the bad things from boxing, especially from the boxer. That, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, like, I owe him on top of that. It, it took me almost to the bankruptcy, this guy, but I own but, but you learned all the tricks the boxes do I, and everything. I paid the university with this uh, Brian <laughs> de Bull Barbosa. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so in the electronic shop, I, I read that you met a lot of people, not just Jose M who, Suleiman. You want to tell me who else you met and befriended oh, a bit? Uh, so many. One of those, may I rest in peace, is Ingrid Berman. Mm -hmm. He used to come all the time to the store. And I was the first one when she walked into the store, she was crying, saying, you know, I have cancer oh and goodness. I have only a few months to live. So I was the first one to know that Ingrid Berman, Casablanca, you know, the, I, I, the yeah, actor. Yeah. No, no, I know. Uh, and uh, it was very painful because she used to come almost every day to the store. Wow. And definitely uh, Sylvester Stallone, few presidents, that wow. uh, it pass, and Fifth Avenue is only for rich people. Yeah, you know? of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're in the government, you're rich, <laughs> automatic. That's interesting. Who, who who was the first notable boxer that you uh, that you signed? Uh, like first, like where it's like, okay, this guy, like a Sergio Martinez or you know Fortuna or anybody. Well, the, well, the, the first one that uh, I, I didn't sign, but I find it is uh, Manny Pacquiao. Yes, I wanted to get to that, but you got to it all right. All right. Yeah, I mean, you're telling me when you yeah, just, yeah. When you start <laughs> yeah, from yeah, the yeah. beginning. Uh, I used to work with Murad Muhammad. Okay. I did the uh, Murad Muhammad. He was a great promoter, but from time to time he make uh, boo boo mistakes. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, he teach me a lot. Uh, a good Muslim. Uh, I learned with him even uh, the Muslim. Uh, uh, prayer? Uh, pr no, no, only no prayer, but you know the the way that this uh, the kind of to be a good mu Muslim, a good man. Mm -hmm. So I learned a lot. I remember one time, and uh, I was it was in a in a in a event, and I walk into a place that it was the way in, and when I walk, it was about twenty or thirty black men and. Murad Muhammad, he was giving the speech. So I walk in, oh, I'm sorry, he says. He said, no, come on, inside, you are the brother. <laughs> and every one of these uh, men, he look at me like, well, what do you do, this white boy? <laughs> <Who does?" laughs> and he said, this is my best soldier. Wow. And I want to give him the respect. And each one of them, he gave me a hug, the 30 of them. That's Every one of them. It was something so special to show that in, in I cannot understand whoever discriminate uh, on on you know on black people or any kind of uh, uh, ethnic group, you yeah. know. But thank God I born in a country that doesn't exist. Yeah. And I go, I go very often to see if it changed, but it never changed. That's amazing. That, that is the most beautiful thing that I can say. And every time that anybody tell me where you come from, or you know, if you are an American that you live in Las Vegas or whatever, I say, no, if you want to make me in an in interview, you need to say that the Uruguayan promoter. That's Why? Amazing. Because in my country, we not discriminate. I don't want to be attached with anyone that discriminate anybody. That's so amazing. this is, you know, this, yeah. and I believe every Uruguayan it, it, feels it can, the same way. Feels the same way. Yeah, we are very proud of our country, small and, one, but 
definitely one of the best. Uh, tell me about the amateur program kind of that you have in Uruguay that you're trying to get the boxing situation yeah, up. Don't, and yeah, up. Don't, don't forget, excuse me, to interrupt. let's continue with the story, yes. With the story of Manny Pacquiao. Oh, yes, I'm and, so sorry. And I want to give you a tip for everybody that listen to you that mm-hmm. nobody, I mean, almost nobody knows. That is true, true. The first fight, when I got Manny Pacquiao and I gave him to Murad Muhammad, mm-hmm. because he was, I was an employee in that time. Yeah, you were yeah. a matchmaker, right? A matchmaker okay. and everything in that company. <laughs> so we going to, with Javier Castillejo fighting Oscar de la Hoya in 2001. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was in June, and uh, after that, we have the tragedy of the Twin Tower. Mm-hmm. So I need to do all the medicals in Nevada for them, as well as Castillejo that he fought Oscar de la Hoya. And I go to the to him and say, can you come with me to take the blood? I said, oh, sure, Manny, no problem. And he faint. Mm. And he had, he's so scared about needles. And many people in, in the boxing business knows that he cannot that doesn't want to do tests, blood tests. And many people accuse him to have drugs or-, or Yeah, performance enhancing. Performance yeah. Enhancing. But it's not, he's it's afraid yeah. to kneel. Yeah, which is why the, the Mayweather fight didn't happen for like a long time because he refused to do the drug the, testing. It was that he needed to take but blood. But he, he was, he, you saying it was more he was scared about fainting or being weak in the fight. No, as, no, no. No, no if, I'm saying if, because of the needles. No, no, the needles only to faint and embarrass himself. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> so I called Murano I said, Mura, yeah, this guy, this Filipino, he fainted on me. <laughs> he said, oh my God, we lose the fight. And and then after he, that man, he recouped himself, he said, don't worry about it, I will beat him. Okay. I'm very afraid of uh, of uh, needles. The needles. Okay. Do, do you know, uh, what, what fighter was it uh, that he fought for that fight? He fought the... Um, he fought in on the undercar um, was it Ladabwa? in Africa. Ladabwa. Ah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. He he had a fantastic Six performance. Yeah. Uh, I remember uh, reading a, a, a article where Freddie Roach said that he was trying to run to the to the to the casino to gamble and bet a lot of money because he saw Manny Pacquiao was an undercar, un, underdog underdog in that. So he was trying, but he said the line was too long. But he was like, a- a- anyway, by by after the weighing. Mm-hmm. It was no more line because everybody went to to Manny Pacquiao and he came a lot of Filipinos, you know, that he made big time. Yeah. So now that that is set up, mm-hmm. let's go to the most proud that I feel in, in this industry of boxing is the amateur. Mm-hmm. So I want to give to boxing what boxing gave it to me. I can retire today if I want. I have uh, I built actually 36, uh, 34 now two more with Benavides at Fundora, thirty six uh, world champion. And God, it was good with me, and so I need to give back. So, but three or four years ago, I started <coughs> a program. Four years, uh, actually, with the pandemic, maybe maybe five even. Okay. Uh, I started a program of uh, amateur in my country. And I started to take kids from jail, uh, kids from the street. And I love what I do. And I I try to give, you know, to my community in Uruguay a, a light in the tunnel. Opportunity. Of, and the opportunity. And from them, the first tournament, he born Amil Carvidal Jr. Wow. And now he's 15 and 0. He's fighting on June 18 in, in Houston, Texas. So I, I'm so proud that I increased the tournament because it was so many people, so many boxers, and so many kids from the street that is coming to the gym that I do every week, every Sunday. You can see it in Facebook. Mm-hmm. that uh, we have uh, fights. You have fights every week? Every week, every Sunday. I hope so that you will go to the uh, Book of Gain. 
Okay. And uh, because nobody did that. Well, in well, any country. What's the Facebook uh, page name? Uh, so for, for the fans who want to check it out. Comisión Uruguaya de Boxeo Amateur y Profesional. Okay. And I'll put that in the link in, 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 the, in the bio for everybody who yeah. wants to check that out. And every Sunday, 6 o'clock, between 6 and 7, in Uruguay, time of Uruguay, that mm -hmm. is uh, one hour uh, over Easter time. Okay. So, and uh, I'm, I'm so proud of that, that, uh, that I couldn't finish there. So now, this July, I'm going with my wife to, to Uruguay, and I build a new things for the youth or, or the infant. Mm -hmm. So it'd be for four years to 11 years. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a program that we call it BRI, B-R-I, Boxeo Recreativo Infantil, without touching, without, yeah, you know. Uh, boxing Recreational Infancy. That's infancy. for the people who don't speak Spanish. Yeah. And with that, I donate for over 100 a gym, the equipment for the kids That's to come and and play at the same time with this very small gloves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That normally you see kids that they go into the gym with the big gloves of the brother <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I have yeah. a, a, I built the special gloves. That's that uh, that I will give you a picture like this. You can put it on. Yeah, for sure. I, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll put it up for you guys. And uh, uh, and it was uh, something that I'm so proud of that because uh, number one, all what I do, you know, is because my wife allowed me. <laughs> See, I'm a big boss, but no, no, not, not in the house. Not in the house. Not, not in, in the, the house. house. <laughs> uh, this is this is a merengue from Dominican Republic that is said uh, that uh, that. A, a music they say that whatever my wife say or something like oh, that you know uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think uh, which one it is I can't think off the top yeah, of my but, head. But, yeah, yeah but I'm like that you know mm -hmm. I don't wash dishes so much but <laughs> from time to time <laughs> but with that to have a good woman next to you no, that sure. approve but I say I don't drink alcohol nobody saw me drink alcohol nobody saw me in drugs nobody saw me with prostitution nobody saw me doing anything wrong so my wife said you know what uh, he said on the coffin, you don't have no pocket to put your money. So let's expend it, Give it but, but in a good way. In a yeah. good way. All and right. I, I'm, I'm so sorry when uh, things happen, like now in, in Texas, that he died 19 kids. <sighs> uh, this is a hard one. And, you know, I'm yeah. against, I'm, I'm married for 48 years. Right. So I can talk big mm -hmm. time, you know. Mm -hmm. And whoever, even a boxer, I have a couple of boxers that he beat his wife, and I throw him out. So you, you, that's un, un, if any boxer of yours has domestic violence, you will release him immediately. Immediately. No matter who it is. Doesn't matter. If Sergio Martinez did it, if. It, well, Sergio Martinez is a sweetheart. <laughs> uh, no, no, I, I'm giving an example. <laughs> no, no. An example. Uh, it's David Benavidez or any, no, any Fandora. No, no one of my kids. If they you do know, that, they're, they're getting released oh, immediately. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because money is good, but, you know, your integrity is much more. I, I don't want to hear that he's in jail. I don't want to hear that he have issues that, uh, mm -hmm. that, that is not on my circle, mm -hmm. put it that way. Where, where, does the, uh, where does that come from, that, uh, that feeling of making sure the women, the, the wives of your fighters are protected and, and, and all that. Uh, always, uh, I was growing up on my father and my mother in Uruguay that, that I saw my father hitting my mother and that it kept me that I would never do that. And even though my father he was for me everything, he realized that he was wrong and he split. And he explained to me that that he feels so bad that he hit my mother that he want, doesn't want to happen again. Because always I say to everyone, if violence for women, especially to the women's, uh, women sometimes I call them a coward because he doesn't go to the police immediately and send the the husband or boyfriend to jail because he will do it again, it's a circle. You start in one point and you go all the way to, the, to go to the same place. So when, when a woman that he got beat up 
doesn't go to the police and charge that person, I call him a coward. I mean, I, I think that's a bit unfair. And I only say this because sometimes, a lot of times, the man is the breadwinner. So if she calls the cops, yeah, you know, he's but, the one who pays but, all the bills. Yeah, yeah, and we, but, and we but don't know how, look, what's no, his no, intentions. If I say that if any woman that he got beat up by his husband and, and, and he stay with them, most likely we get killed anyway. So you might as well call the cops. Might as well call the cops. And, so, I and I say I to everyone, I did that with uh, Sergio Martinez in Mexico. We went to this uh, a place, a hospital place, that, that there was so many women beat up with no nose, with no eye. I mean, that that is... And, and this is the reason that women need to be strong because women is strong. So any women that they get beat by boyfriend or husband or whatever it may be is supposed to charge him and trust me if great percentage of women do that it will be it will save so many lives but go back to boxing yeah yeah going back to <laughs> boxing uh this, this uh, uh you brought up pacquiao and i kind of wanted to get into how you found pacquiao because there's a very interesting story behind it so there was a lawyer trying to get him signed that he was having trouble. Could, could you break that down? That, how that, that That's correct. Uh, that lawyer from San Francisco, uh, he went to Bob Arum, and Bob Arum said, no, what I do is small kid, uh, small <laughs> Filipino. Right. He went to Dan King in mm -hmm. that time. He went to my recent piece, uh, Dan Goosen. And I believe that he was the three more powerful. Oh, and... Um, uh, main events? Uh, no? Uh, Kathy Duva? I don't know if it was Kathy Duva. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, I went to Arpelulo. Oh, My wife Arty Perp. Yeah. <laughs> She's <laughs> good. <laughs> 40, 46 years, right? That's good. 48. 48. Sorry, sorry. I don't want to so short you. So he went to many uh, promoters, <laughs> and everyone is saying, what I do with Filipino? But uh, he said, so what are you coming to me? Uh, Sydney Hall, it was his name. Is his name. Sydney Hall. The, the lawyer. The lawyer. So okay. I said, what do you call me? You went all over. What I, what? I want you to see the, the tape of the last fight. Okay. So, okay, send me. It was a VHS, remember the VHS? Yeah, yeah, VCR, yeah. I put it, and the other uh, Filipino, he dropped. He actually was a, a Thai guy. Oh. I said, he took a dive. <laughs> 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 I go into slow motion, and I see that he was a shot to the liver. I said, oh my God, I didn't see it so, so fast. fast. Yeah. And I called Murad Muhammad at the time. Murad, we have it, the champion of the And I said, let's go and sign it. In that time, it was not the computer that you enter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, or you have it already uh, built uh, the contract. Mm -hmm. So you to do it. So, so we do it by hands. Till now, I do have it. The first contract of Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao. That's amazing. And uh, he signed it in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And that is a story, but I never really uh, represent directly, but I did his first uh, four mm -hmm. fights mm -hmm. and I built his name in four fights. Then I left because I saw things that. I don't like. I learned a lot from Murad, but sometimes like like what? What did he like? It, it, well, you know, he went. He finished in court and he lost, so it's good enough. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not like Look I up the paperwork if you yeah, if you really right. want to know the story. <laughs> yeah, you can go to New York. He was in New York mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. he sued money to Murad Muhammad, and he got, I believe, a few million dollars. You know, okay. Back. Wow, that's interesting. How, how did you find uh, Sergio Martinez? Uh, by recommendation, the first one, it was uh, 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 Castillejo. Mm -hmm. And the same manager he have, uh, uh, Sergio Martinez. Okay. And it took me a year to convince me to get uh, Sergio Martinez, and I got it. But it's not only to get a fighter, how to build a career. Yes, for sure. You know, uh, I have that uh, a way to bring my guys, my boxing to the next level. And some ones, it could get to the top, 
but not so successful because I know what the people want. <laughs> like I say in my last co press conference with the, with David Benavides, Canelo can be the champion, but Benavides is the people champion. <laughs> And that what people like. So you, so your 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 style of uh, necessarily promoting is making him the people's champion, even if he is or isn't the champion. Making him the people's champion, and and, and that's your style. And, uh, and David El Bandera Roja Benavides is the champion of the people. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll get, we'll, I, I I can see that you like something else, but it doesn't matter. No, no, no. <laughs> we'll, we'll get we'll get to David Benavides in a minute. I I just I I just uh, I have a few questions as far as okh okay. uh, like your your style story that because i find your story very interesting how, how did you develop your eye for for boxing talent because find pacquiao martina those are two really really good fighters and, and uh also about fundora david, fundora, benavides. david benavides javier fortuna, fortuna rosario <laughs> uh who else you got uh michelle rivera, michelle rivera. my dominican brother uh, the, uh all those guys uh you have a real keen eye uh, for for uh, like how did you develop that well, if I tell you that, you will take my place. So <laughs> that is a secret. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, so what current Dominican fighters do you promote? I know you got uh, De La, uh, Eric De La Rosa. You got Jason Rosario, Javier Fortuna, the Michelle twist, Rivera. The twist in Nunez, Lu Luis, Luis Nunez. Luis Nunez. Nunez. Uh, you got uh, Starling Castillo's with you. Castillo. So that's six, six off the top of my head. Six Dominican fighters. And it's coming three more that we built him now that he be really very good. Give me the names. I, Cause I'm the voice of Dominican boxing. So I need Wait. to know the names. <laughs> I didn't sign it yet. I built oh. first his career. All right, and all right. then when he's ready, I sign it. So. Right. Okay. I see. That's smart. This, That's smart. this is secret because if you see my name, people doesn't want to fight him. Ah. You see, because all my fighters is coming to fight. I get, and I understand that is my trademark. That's interesting. Uh, he, he's going to tell me when, when the camera's off, so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, what, so I'm the voice of Dominican boxing. I'm very adamant about that because I interview almost all the Dominican fighters. And here in New York City, we got a lot of Dominicans. 50% of the Latinos in New York City are Dominican. That's, okay. how, that's how much the population. So let me put it this way for you, for your people. July 16th. A Dominican fighter, he will fight in Barclay Center. Okay. On the top. Headlining. Second one. Oh, he's I mean, a co-main co -main event. event. Okay, you can't say who. No. All but right. I can guarantee you that people will love him. I, hey, listen, I'm excited for you. got me excited. I'm going to be there because I, I live in New York City. I'm going to be there. I'm, t I'm giving you my word. I'm going to be at that fight. And uh, I definitely will be interviewing whoever this person the, is. The only problem I have that I have the Mexican that will fight with him. <laughs> hey, hey. And that's it. No more. <laughs> that's fine. But it'd be a great fight. All right. I, I, I'll see. I'll see if I do my research and find out on my own. But uh, get, getting back to what I was saying with New York City, we got a lot, a lot of Dominican fighters, a lot of Dominican people. people. And um, so there's a, a Dominican Day Parade, uh, I believe is the second Sunday every year in August. So the second Sunday in August every year. And the way the Puerto Ricans do it with Cotto and Trinidad, they used to do it on the eve of the Puerto Rican Day Parade. Us Dominicans, we want something like that where maybe we have a card with two, three Dominicans here in New York City. And uh, on the eve of the Dominican Day Parade, maybe not so much right away Madison Square Garden or Barclays Center because, you know, we still have to develop. But there's a there's a uh, uh, like a little arena it holds about 3000, 4000 people in Washington Heights. That's a Dominican haven. That's not no, everybody who lives there is Dominican. So I, my dream is to get a, the all Dominican card on the eve of the Dominican Day Parade over there in United Palace. And I, I feel like you're the guy I have to talk to. That's why I was so happy when you told me, yes, you're going to do the interview. I was like, yes, I can finally tell the man who could probably make this happen. Uh, the problem <laughs> is the dates on TV. Okay. And the quality of fight you would put. Mm -hmm. Because Dominican is very knowledgeable now in, in boxing. So you need to put the real fights yeah. to fill it up the place. You would not fill it up the place with low end or future champions. You need to be something big to attract 
And in this moment, uh, without the TV for that day, because everything is being done, it'd be almost impossible to feel 3,000 people. Okay. And, uh, and it's a big, big risk money-wise. But in the close future, we need a, a champion, Dominican champion. For and sure. then And 3,000 people is not too many to pay because if you imagine that only the test for New York is over $1,000 for each fighter. Mm -hmm. Plus, the hotel is very expensive. Here in New York, You're yeah. You're talking about 200 to $300 a night. And then the food is uh, something impossible. And with 3,000 people, you're not covered. Oh, I see what you're saying. So yeah. you're saying just the fact that it's in New York City, the city's so expensive, expensive with the hotels and, and uh, everything else and medicals, yeah. ends up becoming expensive. And there's it, <coughs> no way you can uh, you recoup. Can yeah. Recoup. Forget about to make money. I will do it for free. I did it many times for free, but the point is not to lose. Not to lose time. money. At least break even. And and it's difficult yeah. right now with, with the quality of fighters we have right now. It's, it's and, and like an example, you know, any fighter today, you're talking about, you know, depending, but to headline, you need to look on $150,000. I mean, in the low end. Yeah, that's on the low end, yes. Yeah. So how you do that? Yeah, and, and, and doing a, a, a show box with all Dominicans, kind of like how you did in Florida, is, is not possible here in New York because I, I, of those I did reasons. it be in Florida, and I'm break even. But if I do that... In New York, you it will not be enough people. You will not sell the... Because I'm sorry to say that. You're no, no, speak the truth, man. This, we, we talk the truth on this show. Uh, Dominican people love... To go see boxing, but for free. Okay. And in in uh, in Dominican Republic, uh, everybody is your friend if you let it come in. But I have uh, my partner Manguita, okay, that is Cesar Mercedes, mm -hmm. and I went on the first show in Dominican Republic. Hey, Manguita, go mm -hmm. in. <laughs> you know? ah, ah, so ah. let's put it. I say, Manguita, why are you giving for free? You will not pay, but at least he show on TV that is full. It's full. So that way that it was mislead to the to the people. Now everyone you want to be uh, for free. You cannot, well, and you have no TV. The you you're talking about pelota baseball. Yeah. Now it's no no issue. The government it helped. It, it put money on that. You're talking about boxing that that is so normal. That that, and and it takes so many people from the street, so many youth. And but, and the the government doesn't help in that. It help only pelota. Well, well, I I have seen that. Like I feel like the talent in Dominican Republic has gone up significantly, and it and it's because I spoke to, as I mentioned before. Uh, I've I've interviewed a lot of Dominicans, and what they tell me is that this is now Cuban coach uh, and the national team which is why a lot of the Dominican fighters now are, are coming and they're looking a lot different than they did in the past. So I feel like the, the they're investing a lot in the national team, but as far as maybe not, elsewise... Not professional. Yeah, professional, no. And and, and this is the, the reason that uh, it's very hard because the culture of the Dominican is to go for free and it's not to be... Now, I want to put but, a fight Dominican... That Dominican uh, fight that they treat... Mm -hmm. the, the, although he was Dominican, I called a few uh, stations and he said, you need to pay me. So instead to get paid, I need to pay to show... Uh, the stations in Dominican in Republic. Dominican is so. shameful. Yeah. Well, the, 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 the Dominicans in New York, we would support. I'm telling you that because I, I, I'm the pulse of the people. I'm telling you, we will support. I, I, as far as 3,000, I, I can't... I, there's no way I can know if 3,000 yeah. will show up or not. But I know that there is a Dominican fan base in boxing here in New York. I understand that in the Dominican Republic, uh, it's not so much. But if you look from the boxing voice, you Nesta want a Gibbs, challenge? You want a challenge? Sure. Okay. I want on July 16th, even though he's not my boxer. Okay. Okay. I want to see how many flag of Dominican Republic you will show in Barkley. And you will see, and he's a very big name. Oh. The, the guy who's fighting who and it's a world championship fight 
It's a world championship fight July 16th, you're telling me. Oh, you get me excited. But but listen, listen. What I always tell people, anytime I speak to a manager or promoter, I always go, listen, I'm willing to help in any capacity for free to help the, the, the uh, get Dominicans here in New York to fight here in New York. And I feel like uh, we're misleading how to promote Dominicans because Dominican people, we're, we're, we're party guys, you know? So a lot of the times promoting with clubs or promoting with musicians and promoting in certain areas, whether it be in the Bronx or Washington Heights, where there's a large uh, population. Because I never see no posters. I never see billboards or anything or or them having a, a video of them walking down Broadway in, in, in Washington Heights. Yeah, this, 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 this situations where I feel like we're missing, we're missing something as far as getting promoted. And, uh, Again, and, and it's not necessarily because there's bad promoters. Cause, you know, I, I'm not going to say Top Rank's a bad promoter. That would be a lie. It's just they don't know the market. So I'm, I'm that's that's the whole reason why I started my channel to promote and 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 and, uh, and almost educate the promoters and managers because I have a lot of relationship with managers, not so much with promoters, on how to promote Dominicans and where to promote them. So. Uh, well, you have your your challenge to see how many flags I will show. It's not my show, by the way. No, no, it's not your show. But uh, one of my guys, he would fight the Dominican top notch. Okay. And and that I want to see how many flags I see. Can and, you give me a weight class? Oh, no. Come Definitely on. Not, no, uh, <laughs> if we need first to sign a contract and then. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, listen, I, I'm, I'm going to accept that challenge. How about that? I'm going to accept that challenge. I'd be, I be in Barkley. I'll be there too. Oh, okay. I'll be there too. And I'm going to pay because I'm not one of those Dominicans <laughs> that want it for free. I'm going to pay. I'm going to pay. So I'll be there and, and, and I guarantee you. I will have more Dominican flags than you expect. I I hope so. And then we can sit and talk. Eh? And then and then we'll sit we'll, we'll sit and talk again. All right. I have a few questions here from Twitter. Uh, uh, well, actually, let, let me ask these uh, two questions. Then I'll get to the questions on, on, on Twitter. Uh, so, uh, y your fighters seem very loyal to you, like Sergio Martinez. He, uh, you know, he stuck with you, he stuck with you, and uh, and the, also David Benavidez at one point send back the money that top rank sent him to stay with you what is it with the relationship you have with your fighters that they're willing to stay with you i'm i believe like i this no my boxer is my sons all right and i treat him like my sons and david benavides when he got two hundred fifty thousand dollars bonus from bob adam he was because he told him i'd be a, a, his partner mm -hmm. and we continue and he offered me 1.5 million dollars to me to be partnership. Be part, 50 50 partnership, yeah. And 1.5, 1.5 million, 1.5. Mm -hmm. It will not, it's, it's not enough. Every many have a price, you know? Mm -hmm. But my price is much higher than that because my loyalty to the boxer was more important because, at the end of the day, who will pay that 1.5? Penavides. So how I can take the money, continue to be a partner, and Benavides, you need to pay because nobody give you nothing for nothing. An example, all my fighters, no one got a bonus, including Benavides. Mm -hmm. or, my, or, or Sergio Martinez, or mm -hmm. Michelle Fundora. Rivera, or Fundora, nobody have you know, a, a money signing control, bonus, yeah, signing yeah. bonus, because then I need to charge him, and with interest, and that is wrong. That's so whoever wants to work and be a champion, you need to come with me, and fight. I understand. There's no free pool in my company. No, uh, and, and you you have a history of staying loyal with your fighters and and, and getting putting them in po opportunities, whether they win or lose. You you definitely have a a, a great track record in putting your fighters in in position. So uh, one of the last questions from me, and then I'll get to the questions from Twitter, is from what I understand, you beat cancer. And uh, 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 do you want to talk about that? Uh, well, uh, two years ago, two and a half now, uh, I have my granddaughter, four years old, and her auntie is a doctor. So all the time I go to her house, mm -hmm. she said, I'm a doctor, 
you know, and you look at me, put all this plastic uh, <laughs> for the blood pressure, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And one day say, you have a boo in your nose. I say, yes, you need to go to a doctor. I say, but you're a doctor. He said, no, nah, <laughs> I'm a pretended. And he's only four years old. <laughs> I'm a pretended doctor. I say, oh, okay, so I will go. I need to promise. So that was in New York because I have a home in Long Island. And, uh, and then we went back to Vegas, to my second home. And my wife, a week later, said, you granddaughter told you <laughs> to go to the doctor. Because of the boo-boo. The <laughs> boo-boo. So I, I went to the doctor. And right away say you have something wrong. Uh, you know, I said, no, it's my nose. No, 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 you have something wrong. It was a cancer, very aggressive. Oh, no. And, and then I went to Houston, and Houston University Hospital, and uh, he told me he took first one thyroid, then the second one, and then the cancer, he, he went through the blood, and he told me that he needed to be uh, nuclear radiation, Wow. And I stayed three weeks. I, well, this it took two years. The last one, it was three weeks. And it was very painful, very Tough. sad, because yeah. you was I was alone three weeks. And But finally, first of all, he sent me home. I forgot to say that. He sent mm -hmm. me home. I said, why <laughs> you sent me to die, doctor? He <laughs> said, the insurance doesn't pay. So I took my credit card. And I give it to him and say, you can charge whatever you want, but I believe that I deserve to live. The doctor, you know, he mm -hmm. took care, he went to him. So three weeks later, when I went home, he said, in six months, we find out if you're free of cancer. When I went back, I was free of cancer. Wow. For a treatment that if you don't have money in this country, you're dead. Wow. And that is most sad. I tell him, I'm so sad, if I don't have the money, I was dead by now. He said, yes. And what happened with the other people? Does he have no money? Some is sell the house. Some is sell the, ask for money. Jewelry, every I mean, possessions, so, everything. Every, so it's so sad in such a beautiful country uh, that that the, I'm jealousy with Canada. <laughs> Canada, we save you. Yeah. We are the neighbor and we cannot save our people to die. Yeah. It's unfortunate that uh, our system is like that, but it's been like that for a long time. Doesn't look like it's going to change. But uh, I want to transition. I have some questions here from the fans on Twitter. Once I announced that I was going to be interviewing you, a couple of people wanted to ask him questions. Uh, at only one Michael says, "What is your uh, what is next for Fundora? Charlo, Zoo, or Harrison?" Charlo say no. Okay. Uh, Zoe say no. <laughs> so, so we see. And Harrison say no. Harrison said no as well. So you had communication. And it's mandatory. So you had communications with all three camps and they all said no. No. Okay. All right. Next. And, the, and this was public too. And Charlie said, what well, I need this guy to. Yeah. Six foot six. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't see a lot of people. And by the way, Charlie is my dear friend. Both of them. Both, both brothers. Yeah. All right. Uh, at About Nothing Pod says, do you do business with Eddie Hearn? Eddie Hearn is very, very hard to make business. When he need you, he will call you 10 times. When he doesn't need you, now it's a different story. Oh. But uh, he's very successful in his way. And I have nothing much to say that I took a couple of fighters to England and he treated me with the most dignity. Okay. But it's very hard to work with. It's, he's, he's difficult to work with. Yeah. So you do do business, it's just... It's not as easy as uh, yeah, as correct. working with others. Yeah. All right. Uh, Ezra Boxing uh, is asking, when scouting a boxer, what exactly are you looking for? Loyalty and honesty. Because if it's not honest with boxing, because boxing is very jealous. So if you make a mistake to drink, you pay in the fight. Mm -hmm. Because there's jealousy. You cannot drink. You cannot drugs. You cannot uh, have family sometimes. You know, you need to dedicate 100% to boxing to be successful. And if you ask Fundora, Fundora will tell you, my house is my gym. And you have a gym in the back. 
of the wow, house. Wow, that's interesting. And, and sometimes doesn't go out of the house for months, four or five months with that to get out of the street, beside to run. Wow. And that is the success. And he's walking 165 pounds, and he's fighting 54, and he wants to go to 47. He wants to go to 47? He can make it with no problem. Because that. he's walking at 65. The 47 pounders. Did, that, they that just like, won't fight him. So. Like I do some of those mm -hmm. that I can mention the name, right? Yeah, you can mention That they go up to 200 pounds. And that is the banana. Yeah. Eat a lot of banana. <laughs> and rice and bean. Yeah, Jason Rosario. Which is probably why he he's had problems taking it to the body. That's he's correct. Blowing up. But now I he learned now. He's learning he now. Learned. All right. I have another question from A-Side Boxing Talk. He's saying, what is the highest profile fight you promoted or been a part of? Oh, the biggest one? Chavez Martinez? Chavez Martinez, probably, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that it was the bigger one. That's what, that, 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 was, that was. Uh, at Lazy Lefty OG is saying, uh, why are you against Andrade finding Benavidez when David and his father are both willing to fight? Because... First of all, it doesn't bring nothing to the table. He's not a draw. He's not a draw. He can walk in any street in Manhattan and nobody recognizes him. You know. <laughs> Secondly, he's a boxer that he box for himself, not for the people. The only thing is winning. He doesn't care how. So he's a runner. He's an excellent boxer, you know. So... If he fight, it will look. So you're saying if you beat him, you're not even going to look good beating him. Yeah, that's right. And if so, he beats you, he he's not going to look good beating and, you. It's and not beside, worth it. Besides that, I know the father when he just started, when he finished the Olympic, mm -hmm. I, I can tell you that it's only about money. Okay. And I will never make a deal with him because he'd be swinging out, out of the park on money-wise. What do you mean by that? He will ask him for crazy money that doesn't happen oh andre's father would ask for a lot of money, lot of like, money i want 10 million dollars i don't know about no, how many million five whatever yeah but i i recommend it not to get away from eddie hearn stay stay eddie hearn is spend you know the money of the others doesn't spend your own money <laughs> pvc <laughs> is more serious he give you the right amount yeah yeah, yeah. and doesn't spend a, doesn't overpay overpay yeah. okay all right but they give you the great opportunities. No, for sure, for sure. Uh, kind of Blue ha is asking, has there been any communication from Charlo's camp to fight Benavidez? No. No? All right, last question is from at Polo Torres 9821. Why did you not allow Benavidez to spar pa Canelo? Because, he, uh, first of all, I know Canelo from Pro Debut. Actually, I pro was involved. You know him since the pro day pro you? I was involved in the promotion when the seven brothers fought the same night. Wow. And the only good one, he was like, <laughs> <laughs> So the percentage of the mother and father, it was very low, <laughs> but the best. And I have, uh, Eddie Reynoso is my dear friend okay. for many years. And we did, I did many shows with him in Guadalajara. Mm -hmm. So when he asked me, I never thought, from 54 to go to 68, I told him if he fight Benavides, it would hurt him. And I'm talking about when he was 18 years old. Okay. So you you you, you were protecting Canelo from getting a beating yeah, and sparring. That's correct. Wow. So that that is uh, the reason probably that it would never happen this fight. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, Samson, thank you so much for giving me the interview. You are absolute legend in this boxing game, been involved with a bunch of champions, as we mentioned, Benavides, Fandora. Michelle Rivera, well, Michelle Rivera is not champion yet, yet, yes. but you've been also involved with Pacquiao and Martinez and, and you know, a bunch of others that I can't name off the top of my head, but I, I really want to thank you for come, taking time out your day, coming here and doing this interview with me. I really appreciate it. And you know that I love Dominican Republic. Hey, man, listen, Dominican <laughs> Republic, we love you too, because uh, again, I, in New York City, that's why I was saying there's a bit, a bit, uh, a bit of a difference between the Dominicans here in New York and, and the Dominicans in Dominican Republic. Dominicans here in New York, we love boxing. Like uh, you know, you I, I've seen you on the on the boxing voice with Nesta. Yeah, yeah, Nesta. He, he's Dominican. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Punch Drunk. He's Dominican. He's another YouTuber. Ring IQ. He's another it, YouTuber. It's, it's, it's a lot. We, yeah. we have a lot of Dominicans in in, in New York and, and New Jersey as well that we like boxing. So. 
Uh, I, I definitely, once I had the opportunity to get you on the show, I definitely wanted to get you on. But I, I'm telling you, I, I'm going to change your uh, perspective on, on how Dominicans we support. Because uh, a- anything I can do to promote a Dominican fighter, whether he's yours or not, I'm, I'm going to do it. You can send them my way. July 16th, Markley. Jamar- July- Listen, July 16th. Every Dominican watching this, because I got a lot of Dominican subscribers, you better support. You're going to make me look bad. Bring the biggest Dominican flag you got in your house. July 16th, Barclay Center, show up with your flag, and we're going to get a big win. He's telling me it's a championship fight. He's not even giving me the weight class. I may I may try to get it all out of him after after the show. <laughs> and we run away. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, July 16th, we're we, we going to show up for sure. Thank you. Thank you very much and God bless all. No, no, thank you as well.